Here's a flash revision guide on kinetic and potential energy, including the equations for kinetic, gravitational potential and elastic potential energy, and examples of questions using these equations. Let's get into it. So let's go through some of the equations you need to know for the energy topic. The first is for kinetic energy, which is the type of energy store that any moving object has. The amount of kinetic energy that an object has depends on its mass and speed. The greater its mass and the greater its speed, the more energy it has in its kinetic energy store. And the equation for this is half times mass times speed squared, where kinetic energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, and speed is measured in meters per second. So let's try a quick example using this equation. Let's say we have a car with a mass of 798 kilograms traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second and we wanted to find its kinetic energy. So first thing to do in any calculation is to identify the information you have and what you're trying to find out. In this question we've been given a mass of 798 kilograms and a speed of 30 meters per second and we're asked to find out the kinetic energy. So in an exam, you then need to find the correct equation which includes all of these three things, which we already know is the kinetic energy equation. Before you sub any numbers in, just make sure that there are no units you need to convert. Mass and speed in the equation are both in kilograms and meters per second, and in the question, they're also in kilograms and meters per second. So there's no need for any conversions here. So now we can sub the numbers straight into the equation as half times 798 times 30 squared. Just remember here that you should only square the 30 and not the whole answer. When you do this, you should get a final answer of 359,100 joules. The second type of energy you need to know the equation for is gravitational potential energy, which depends on how high up an object is, its mass, and also how strong gravity is on the planet that it's on, which we call gravitational field strength. And on Earth, this is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. The equation for this is mass times gravitational field strength times height, where gravitational potential energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilograms on Earth, and height is measured in meters. So let's try a question with this equation. Here we have a lift with a mass of 1,100 kilograms with a gravitational potential energy of 74.6 kilojoules and we want to find out the height of the lift. So let's note down the information that we have first. We have a gravitational potential energy of 74.6 kilojoules. We have a mass of 1,100 kilograms and the gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That value will be given to you in any exam. So height is what we're trying to find out. So we identify that the equation we want to use is the gravitational potential energy one. Next step is to look for any conversions. So if you look carefully here, mass and gravitational field strength are both in the correct unit, but gravitational potential energy is given in kilojoules. And in the equation you can see it needs to be in joules. So we need to convert from kilojoules to joules. And to do that, you just multiply the 74.6 by 1000. That gives you 74,600 joules. So now you're ready to put these values into the equation, but you need to rearrange it as the question's asking for the height. So to make height the subject of this formula, you need to move the M and G to the other side of the equation. And you do that by dividing both sides by MG. And this gives height is equal to gravitational potential energy divided by mass times gravitational field strength. So we can sub the values in and we get a final answer of 6.92 meters. So the third equation we're going to look at is elastic potential energy, which is energy stored in a stretched object. This depends on how much the object is stretched, which we call the extension, and the spring constant, which is how stiff the object is. And the equation for this is similar to kinetic energy, but half times spring constant times extension squared, where elastic potential energy is measured in joules, spring constant in newtons per meter, and extension in meters. So for a question using this equation, let's say we have an elastic band that has a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter. What extension does it need to be stretched to in order to store 12.15 joules of elastic potential energy? 
So the information that we've been given is an elastic potential energy of 12.5 joules and a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter. And we're asked to find out the extension. So we write down the equation and check to see if there's any conversions that need to be done. But you can see here that all the units in the question match up with the units in the equation. So there's no need to do any conversions. Now before you sub in the values, you need to make sure you rearrange the equation properly. So first we move the half and the k across by dividing both sides of the equation by half and k. So this is all equal to e squared. So if you want to actually find out what e is, you need to square root the whole thing to give you square root of elastic potential energy over half times k. Now subbing the values in, 12.15 divided by half times 30 gives you 0.81. Now a common mistake is to forget to square root it at the end, so make sure you remember to do that. And doing that gives you a final answer of 0.9 meters. So let's try one more example where the energy stores are transferred from one type to another. Here we have a ball with a mass of 1.2 kilograms falling off a building that's 23 meters tall. And part A of the question asks how much gravitational potential energy does the ball have before it falls? This part is similar to the others. We have a mass of 1.2 kilograms. Gravitational field strength is still 9.8 newtons per kilogram and height is 23 meters. And the question is asking us to find out gravitational potential energy. So we use the equation for gravitational potential energy. There are no conversions needed here. So you can sub all the values straight into the equation to give you 1.2 times 9.8 times 23, which gives an answer of 270.48 joules. So part B of the question is what speed does the ball have before it hits the ground? So here it's not obvious what equation you're supposed to use. So let's start off by writing down the information that we have. We have the gravitational potential energy from the first part which is 270.48 joules and the mass of 1.2 kilograms for the ball. We're asked to find the speed of the ball, so we need an equation that links mass, speed and energy. So what you need to recognize here is that there's an energy transfer involved. Energy is being transferred from the gravitational potential energy store of the ball to its kinetic energy store. So that means the gravitational potential energy that we calculated in the first part gets converted to kinetic energy because the ball is moving downwards. So we can assume that the kinetic energy of the ball is also 270.48 joules. So the equation we need to use here is the kinetic energy equation. There's no conversions needed here, so now we just need to rearrange the equation to make speed the subject. Divide both sides of the equation by half m to give you kinetic energy over half times mass and then square root it to find what v is. Then sub the values in to give you 270.48 divided by half times 1.2. That gives you 450.8. Then square rooting that gives you a final answer of 21.23 meters per second. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.